about 500 feet. Visual with the runway. Map's coming to full. And we are clear, touch and go. You join us on final approach. This is the second part of my night training. This video goes into the circuit. These aren't just simple circuits, however. I have to manage with no flaps, no landing light, dimmed runway lights, no pappies. There's lots of things thrown in at me. And every one of these touch and goes is different. Before we get airborne, Bob explain the types of circuits we're going to do. Circuits. Generally, when people come in, they start to get a little bit fix fixated where the landing light's pointing. So, so you've just got to think, still look at the end, and as you come in, people tend to be shallow. Yeah. So you'll get into the flare and you think, I've got 10 foot, 9 foot, 8 bank, oh, I'm there already. So just bear that in mind. You've right. literally got to stare at the end and just wait till you see these lights coming up. And as they start to come up, you are there or thereabouts. We'll do a few touch and goes, and then we'll do a flapless touch and go, just in case you forget the flaps, and uh, we'll see how they come up. Remember, as, as we briefed, that the runway will appear generally quicker than you think. Yep, so, so the temptation to flare too high, a good indicator on this runway here, is the red lights at the end will disappear, whereabouts you should start thinking about starting the flare. Right. Not where you should be fully flared, but where you should start thinking about it. So it's got a slight hump in it, so the red lights will just drop off. So use that maybe with the first one, just to get your eye in. Yeah. Okay, carpet is away, flaps are full. Yeah, they're just going. That's time to start thinking about it. Okay, flap up. Pull power. Speed and P's on airspeed. Air 70. Pull, pull, pull. These are in the green. And retrim. That is the alien then when you take off and you just can't see anything ahead of yeah, you. Yeah, you just gotta go onto the instruments, have not you? It used to be that you had to have so many hours of IMC before you could do a night rating. Really? But that would be why. Yeah, it's an it's advantage, isn't it? Not so bad for you with your IRR going offshore here, because you'll be fine in the turn, but Someone with just a PPL that plunged into utter darkness as they turn. Yeah. There's a lot of people on the beach looking for lugworms fishing. In with the torches. <laughs> Is that what they're doing? Yeah. The same as you look along. There's some right here, right by the runway. Come down there. Yeah, yeah. Lugworms, eh? Lugworms and blackworms and all that for fishing. There's a lot to think about at night. Go Watch how far, how far offshore we get pushed. Yeah. Although the windsock showed it's been ever so slightly westerly, the upper wind's still northeasterly. And it's weird at night because you can't see the big one. Oh, nope. it's got a red light on top of it. Are we going to touch and go again? Yeah, we're going to do release four probably. Roger that. You've got to be completely comfortable to go on your own because it's just a different thing. Yeah. Go for Juliet, downwind, touch and go. Go for Juliet, roger, report final for runway 28, number 2 to PA 28, on final. Report final number 2, go for Juliet. Go for Juliet, correct, it's actually uh, just on touch and go this time. Say gas, Juliet. Roger. Uh, just the traffic I mentioned, the banana I'll climb out now. Roger, that's copy, thank you, go for the Juliet. Didn't that exactly hear her? Ah, uh, visual, yeah. You guys okay? When there's two of you, it works quite well when you're both doing touch and goes. When one of you starts doing stop goes, it all sorts of break down because yeah. you end up getting closer and closer and closer. 
So a lot of people in the circuit during the day would turn, oh I always turn at the road or I always turn at the radar station. Turn at the 45 and... Yeah, all them things have disappeared now. Yeah, it's difficult at night now to see the bloody runway. Yeah, as you come round, it's not it's not lit very well until you get all your lights in a row. It could be a landing light failure. Best year in the circuit, that'd be terrible, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. So what would you do for the landing light failure? Um, it's failed, but then come back on. Don't take off again. Yeah, but you're still going to have to land, aren't you? Yeah. So we're going to have to land. Um, land carefully. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> a little bit awkward. But at night time, it's always worth thinking about touching down about where the pappies are. Yeah. Rather than right at the very start. Just because you've got the green lights which say up. This is effectively where you can start. This is where the runway starts. But you just give yourself a little bit more room and land a little bit longer. Go to Juliet, final 28, touch and go. Go for Juliet, runway 28, clear touch and go, 7730 degrees, 2 knots. Clear touch and go, go for Juliet. Okay, totally clear break, touch and go. I'll be it away. Landing lights gone. Should we stop? No, oh, carry on. <laughs> but it's hard to see without that bloody landing light. You've really got to use your peripheral vision almost now, haven't you? Yep. Have you ever seen the light from the tower? No, I'm not actually. People think they're going to be looking Thank for. Thank you. For time check one eight four five one zero. People think they're going to be looking for some sort of Batman type light, and that's not the case. I'll get her to show it us shortly. Okay, T's and P's are on the green. I'm going to turn slightly more, fifty feet early. Okay. It's part way out, isn't it? So, yeah. Go for a rescue, runway 28, clear touch and go, sir. And if you're in an engine further, you could make a left turn, couldn't you? And you'd be on the sand at St. Thomas. Yeah. Or you could go right and be on this, but you could just make out the tailor because of the way the waves are. And I've faced a slightly more nose to win this time. Good. So we're going to carry on, we're going to touch and go with no landing light. Roger. The reason we're going to do that is it's a single point of failure. If you lose the landing light, that's it. But you still, you can't just then sit up here until daylight comes. No, no, no. Yeah, got a bit of tailwind. Turn her in. I'm a little bit high still, get the final stage of flaps in. Cover Juliet, final 2-8. That was Carrie only, Oscar Juliet. Well, Oscar Juliet, on my way, clear to land or touch and go, wind is calm. Clear touch and go, thank you, Gobble to Juliet. Go, Gobble, whiskey downwind. Go, Gobble, whiskey, port number two, you're following the PA28 short final. I thought she got a cold. Report yeah. Poor last day. So you've really got to use your judgment now. With no landing light. Copied. Okay, toes clear the brake. Make sure touch and go is granted.
Yeah, see, it was a bit low. Thank Diffi you. Difficult, isn't it, there? Yeah. Much, much more difficult without that one, they like. I was nearly on the, my nose then. Uh, a couple of feet short of it, but... The perception's totally different now. Yeah, hugely. Which is why it's much better now we've got LEDs. A generic landing light lasted about 300, 300 cycles of on-off, on-off. And so we always manage to go off when you're in the circuit at night. Whereas the LEDs, you know... And they go a bit further, don't do they, the LEDs? 3,000 3, hour guarantee, the one wow. we've bought, so... That's 3,000 hours of use. Which is a quarter on the... well... Bit. Not a quarter, but... It'll be like 10,000 airframe hours, won't it? Yeah. Here we have approach lights on, on the two end. Yeah, there's pappies. We'll ask him at one point to take it down to the legal minimum, which is to turn the approach lights off and turn the pappy lights off. So you've just got the lights, because that could be what you come back to, or it could be when you go somewhere, that might be the lighting that you have, just the lights in the middle. When you tell her we're down when it's time for a touch and go, ask her if she'd be very helpful and turn the approach lights and the pappies off, just for one touch and go. Gotcha. Golf off with Juliet, uh, downwind touch and go. If possible, could you turn the um, uh, pappy lights off and the approach lights, please? Golf off with Juliet. Golf with Juliet, Roger, report final number one. Report final number one, Golf with Juliet. So, we'll get her to take it down to the legal minimum. And then you can see what that's like. Well, there's a lot involved with night training. I didn't, I didn't know what to expect, really. I've been looking forward to it. <laughs> you just got to think, you're not always going to come to Blackpool at night, eh? so. No. You just need to set yourself up so that you can get into anywhere. You know, uh, let's take Presswick for instance. Huge runway, centre line lights, 3,000 metres. A parallel taxiway that's enormous, it's got loads of lights on it. What she's going to do now is take it right down to the absolute basic. So if you're going to sleep, this is what you're going to get. Where's open after 5 o'clock at night? Because this, you know, where can you really go? Is that Presswick? So Presswick and land there for about ten quid. Presswick so Presswick is open twenty four hours a day and the price is the same at three AM or three PM. Touch and goers are six pounds. Been once I went up to Nats, which is quite cool. But if you if you fancy a night out of Glasgow you can fight Presswick in the dark, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> It'd be quite cool that actually, wouldn't it? Should you go Presswick lads? <laughs> up to air for a night for a night out. There's no flaps, so that alters the perception. We've no approach lights or pappy, so that's going to alter it again. Yeah. Being as it's Christmas, I'll leave the landing light on for this one. Though. Right. Okay. Thank you. Golf off to Juliet. Runway two eight. Clear touch and go. Surface wind is calm. Clear touch and go. Golf off to Juliet. Come on, speed. I'm at idle here. That's alright. Plenty of room there. Oh, here coming away. They're going to carry five knots on. 75 on, but still at 80 knots here. Got whiskey, down we? Got rubber whiskey, we put final number one. Just hold it and hold it. And full power. See them peas. Got a bit gusty crosswind then. God, you're a nose high attitude, aren't you? Thanks for that. No worries. On the next one, can you show us the uh, light from the tower? I can try. I'll see where the other aircraft is. There's only me and the lamps over the other side of the room, but I'll try my best. <laughs> Cheers. Just if you've never seen it, oh, it's, it's worth seeing. Yeah. It. And the only the best time to see it is at night. And you'll look and you'll be like, is that it? Because if I was coming in during the day looking for that, I would never see it. You know what I mean? 
you'll, you'll, uh, you would struggle to see it during the day. Fact number four. Yep. This will be number five, and if we get the light, I think we'll be landing. So. I will have covered everything that could go wrong, where you've lost the lights inside, you've lost the landing light, you've lost the radio, she's lost control of most of her lighting. See the lamp designed here for the assistant to use. Alright, oh, there's no assistant tonight. No, they don't have an assistant tonight anymore. There's a lot to do for just one of them, isn't there, really? Oh, yeah. I think she has turned the rest of the lights, has she? Oh, she has lost back on now. Oh, yeah. They're just coming on now. What I want you to appreciate from when she shows you the light, if we can see it, is that it's a waste of time looking for it during the daylight. Roger. <laughs> I've seen people come in radio first and go around about eight times because they can't see a light. They're expecting to see some giant Batman-esque yeah. Fluorescent on the sky. And what you're looking for is a light in a sea of lights. Can you turn a little bit earlier? Then you won't go through, will you? Go to the final to land. Go to the left, continue approach, one to five eight. Continue, go to the left. Just that annoying angle of wind, isn't it? Yeah, just the point, but it dies off at the end. Okay, we're slightly high, correcting. Okay. Got the speed this time. I'll oh, be going away. Juliet, one way to eight, clear to land, wind is calm. Clear to land, golf, that's a Juliet. There's the light. Green. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah. Yeah, just about, golf, that's a Juliet. Is it? it? Not really. It's that one there. Yeah, I just see it now, yeah. yeah. That is all you're looking for. So, during the day when you come in with a radio failure, and you're expecting to see some sort of light. Yeah. It's barely, it's but you know, it's barely visible at night, is it? I'm surprised at that, you know. And you've got to know exactly where the tower is and where you're looking. Yeah, exactly. So you're coming to an unfamiliar airfield. Bit of brakes and we'll be off at Echo because we can only yeah. get Echo or Alpha, can't we? Well, Puffy, do you can continue to the end of King Vacator Echo and back to High G by Echo Charlie and Bravo. We'll go Echo. Echo Charlie Bravo to High G, Golf Student, thank you for the light. I am not cutting the corner here. I'm looking for the yellow line. There it is. So slow down because this is way too fast taxi now. It's hard, isn't it, that perception of speed at night? Yep, so we kill the strobe so we put clear of the line, can't we? And then... And normally you might clear the landing light, but we need to leave it on, don't we? Yeah. That's all we've got. Ah! We're back. That was brilliant. I think it's quite good, though. Thanks for coming, chat. Good filming work. Not one, not one second of boredom.